Welcome and thank you for joining us for our online service for Chestnut Street Presbyterian Church, the oldest African American Presbyterian Church in North Carolina.
our continued prayers for the people in a lieu of prayer cards, please email Sheila DeCray at shemacray at AOL.com. That's S-H-E-M-A-C-R-A-E at AOL.com. Or call her at 910-763-2277 or at 910-795-9627 for those persons who will want special prayer for. During um, our usual worship, we have the passing of the peace. Of course, that's something that we cannot do physically today, but we can do technology. If you want to hit the little button on Facebook to say, love or like or give a thumbs up, that's something that'd be great. We'd love to say for you here. Just say hello. Um, continue on with the Chestnut Street Forgiveness and Litton Study with the March 3rd to March 5th. The six session series will combine telephone conferencing um, and self-study journaling. The conferencing number is one seven one two seven seven zero four zero one zero. The PIN number is seven nine two three seven four pound. Again, the telephone number is one seven one two seven seven zero four zero one zero, and the PIN number is seven nine two three seven four pound. With conference calls, you might want to put your phone on mute so that people can hear person leading the event. Our fellowship hour is postponed for further future notice, but you can continue to watch our services via Facebook at https dot forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash Chestnut Street Presbyterian Church USA forward slash and that's for Chestnut for Facebook. For YouTube users, just go, it, YouTube. Just go to YouTube. Just go to YouTube, and um, also you can go to our website, www.chestnutstreetpcusa.com. Yes. yes. For some of you who are wondering how you'll be able to continue to support the church financially, we have solved that problem <coughs> as well. You can mail in your checks to the Chestnut Street's address, and the address. Make sure that we're all on the same page. It's 714. We come, but we not remember. It's 714. It's 714 Chestnut Street here in Wilmington, North Carolina, 28401. Or, for some of us who are tech savvy, you can um, go to our online using the, link, the links on our Facebook page or YouTube or our website. Okay. And there's instructions there to help you with your time and giving. Well, the, the continued support of the church is greatly appreciated. Amen. And now we would like to do the passing of the peace. Um, may the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. And also with you. And during this time of uncertainty, it can definitely be scary to a lot of us to allow the what ifs to overtake our minds. God has given us reassurance that He is a provider and protector. Yes, God. Amen. And that's some reassurance that we can depend on. I would be remiss if I didn't share a little bit about us being the light of God during this time and answering each other's prayer. I want to take a little bit of leeway here from the scriptures. We're all going to be staying in our homes, staying safe, loving our families, but you might want to just call in and check in on each other. Amen. Amen. If you don't have to use video chats, do that. Teach your family, teach your friends in these video chats. Stay connected. Make sure that people are not lacking because someone may be home, scared and alone. This is now the time to be more supportive of one another and understand and practice and pack up our patience with us. Amen. Now moving on to call to confession, the grace of God overflows for us through Christ Jesus. 
who came into the world to save sinners. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive us what we have been. Help us remain what we are and direct what we shall be, that we shall delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word, silence in us an invoice of the throne, that hearing we may also obey your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. My sermon for today is entitled, Fight the Good Fight, and it's a follow-up, a part two, if you will, to Reverend Palmer's recent sermon that he called, All My Life I Had to Fight, mm. and his contextual examination of the color purple by the great Alice Walker. I found the pastor's sermon and the view of this work fascinating for several reasons. One, I'm a fan of the book, and I have two personal connections to Ms. Walker. We are both graduates of Spelman College, mm -hmm. and secondly, she was taught by my father-in-law, the great Ben Carlbaum Sr. when she was a little girl growing up in Eatonton, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And she calls my father-in-law her favorite teacher. So I give honor and respect to him. Amen. Because he's one of those seniors, like so many of us that are sick and shut in, and he's not allowed to go to church. And that's one of his greatest joys. So I'll continue with Reverend Palmer's theme about fighting on the spiritual level. Because right now, that's the most important fight that we're facing. Amen. 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 Especially now, the whole world, the whole world. See, God wanted to get our attention, people, and he has our attention. The whole world is fighting against this coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So in addition, it's very important for us to follow the guidelines of the public health officials. I tell y'all, I have washed my hands today. I do pure ashes. <laughs> so we have to just keep on doing what they say. But while we do that, we have to also strengthen our spiritual muscles at this time. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be coming to you from the second book of Timothy, which is the book that the Apostle Paul wrote shortly before he died. And you know, when people are getting ready to die, we lean in to hear those important last words. Mm -hmm. So these are important words from Paul. And we're going to look at spiritual warfare this morning from three aspects. First, we'll take a look at what it means to be a spiritual warrior in today's time and how we can get stronger at it. Then, since it is still Women's History Month and in honor of the color purple, we will examine women's unique challenges in spiritual warfare. And finally, we'll take a look at the internal battles we face as individuals and how our spirituality can help us overcome them. So if you would, go to scripture with me and read along with me. I'm at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. And it reads as follows. But you should control yourself at all times, except trouble. Do the 
and the time has come for me to leave this life. I have fought the good fight. I have completed the race. I have kept the faith. The prize that shows I have God's approval is now waiting for me. The Lord, who is a fair judge, will give me that prize on that day. He will give it not only to me, but also to everyone who is eagerly waiting for him to come again. Pray with me, if you will, church. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Lord, needing a word from you this morning, Father. Lord, I'm just a broken vessel, but I ask that you would just move me out of the way and speak through me, Lord, to your people who are eagerly waiting to hear a word from you this morning. Mm -hmm. Lord, we give you all the honor and all the praise, and we thank you as the word comes forth. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 So let's talk about being a spiritual warrior, church. The Bible tells us, for we walk in the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging a war according to the flesh. For the weapons of warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So as a Christian, I believe one of the most important things that we have to do is to know how to fight. Especially now in this time of panic and fear. We have to know how to fight and pray if we want to come out of this thing victoriously. Mm -hmm. And I believe we will. In today's world, we're in constant spiritual warfare for our faith and even our peace of mind. Come on, survivor. Mm -hmm. We are deluged with images and news and information, fake news and rumors, mm -hmm. all of which can be overwhelming and challenging. And I believe that we should be informed, but sometimes I think we have to step back and turn all that off for a minute. Amen. This is a good time for us to come to Jesus and to be in his presence. Jesus said to us, peace I leave with you. Come My on. peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Lord knows I believe he was talking to us about right now. <laughs> Jesus, it's a time that we're in. And we have to be spiritual warriors. Let's take a look at the life of the great Muhammad Ali. Ali was considered the greatest fighter of all, of all time. They called him the GOAT. His career spanned 20 years, church. He had 56 wins, 37 knockouts, and only five losses. He was a bad boy in his day. He worked very hard at training so he could always be the very best. They say Ali would get up every morning at 5.30 so he could stretch and then go on a six-hour run. Then he would eat a healthy breakfast and he would train at the gym from 12.30 to 3.30 every 
please. As spiritual warriors, women dealing with unique battles, and all of us fighting internal battles. Fight the good fight of faith. And when we are finished, God will say, oh, that's my child. And they fought the good fight. They finished their race. And I know we're all going through this public health challenge right now. And other challenges, too. See, that's the thing. This isn't the only thing. This ain't our first time at the rodeo. Come We've been on. going through a long time. But we have to remember to keep fighting and never give up because God is on our side. And Amen. I'm telling you, church, we'll win if we don't quit. Yes. We'll win if we don't quit. With God on our side, there's nothing that can stop us from overcoming. I tell you, we got the victory. We got the victory in Jesus' name. So hold on. Amen. Hold on. Keep washing those hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Mr. Walker. Let us pray. Eternal and wise God. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning, Father. Lord, we thank you that you teach us how to fight and pray, Lord. We thank you that we are not going to go corona crazy, God. Mm. Lord, we know that you know all about it. You know the day is starting, and Lord, you know the day is going to end. Lord, we ask that you would just be with us, Lord. Give us compassion and mercy for one another. Father, we not only praying for our sick and shut in, but Lord, now we are the sick and shut in. Mm. So maybe, Lord, you just wanted mm. us to take time to sit down and know what it feels like, Lord. What it feels like to wonder about your money, to wonder about your job, wonder about your health. Lord, that's what many of our seniors face every day. Mm. So, Lord, this will teach us, Lord, not just to just to call or, or, or just drop by, but, Lord, to really fully and totally empathize and know what it is because we're all going through the same thing. So, Lord, give us strength. Give us wisdom. Lord, help us get through this. And let us come out of it more compassionate, more loving, and more open to your word. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. charging word. You know, God can work through anybody. Amen. Who are willing to listen. And heed the Lord's word. Prayers of the people. We have a few prayers, requests that came in. From Paula Moore, she asked that we pray for her and her family. The Pittman, Carr, Johnson, Punk families. A special prayer for her and her husband. We also like to pray for our country, yes. its citizens, yes. all who have been affected by the COVID-19 virus, the healthcare workers, yes. and those who are supporting the healthcare workers by staying open, like the gas stations, the child care centers, mm -hmm. Amen. to make sure our children are safe. We pray for our leadership in our government. We pray for our local leadership as well. Sheila McCray has asked that we pray for Theodore Johnson and his family, the McCray family, the Michaels family, the Lee family, the Miller family. Rhonda Allen, her first anniversary of her mother's passing. I'd like to pray for the sick and shut-in. I'd also like to say a special prayer for the folks who are here to help this webcast be successful. I'm praying for the military at this time. I work at the Captain Shop, <coughs> so I am definitely praying for our Marines and our sailors and our first responders. Amen. Yes. We all have a fight in this, and with God's 
Amen. Amen. Tithes and offerings can be mailed to the church at 712 Chestnut Street, Wilmington, North Carolina, 28401. Or you may access our online giving via our church website at www.chestnutstreetpcusa.com and scrolling down and clicking the Support Now button. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he rose again from the dead. <coughs> and from the right hand of the Father, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.